Hello, and welcome back to Radiography Simplified. I remain Michael. We are making tons of progress with our radiation biology course. In this section, we'll talk about the actions of radiation on living tissues. Earlier in this series, we mentioned that the DNA contains the biological information of an organism. So if radiation were to damage the DNA of an organism, the biological information of said organism will be sort of altered. This leads to the biological effects of radiation such as cancer induction, cataract formation, lifespan shortening, sterility, and so on, because damage to the DNA can lead to a lot of bad stuff. In radiation biology, the DNA is referred to as the critical target. Damage to the DNA or critical target can occur directly or indirectly. In direct action, the radiation interacts directly with the atoms of the DNA to produce the biologic changes. While this can theoretically occur with all forms of radiation, it is more likely to occur with particulate radiation, such as alpha particles and neutrons. This is because, as we have said in previous sections, particulate radiation has a great charge and this permits efficient transfer of energy to the critical target. As for the indirect action of radiation on the critical target, the radiation does not directly ionize the critical target. Instead, it interacts with other molecules in the cell, such as water molecules. By interacting with these molecules, free radicals are produced. A free radical is a molecule, ion or atom, that has one or more unpaired electrons. From basic chemistry, we learn that when electrons of an atom are paired, the atom is stable and less likely to participate in chemical reactions. On the flip side, atoms with an unpaired electron are unstable and more likely to react with other atoms. Thus, the produced free radicals are highly reactive. The indirect action of ionizing radiation occurs more commonly with non-particulate radiation such as X-ray photons. This is because they lack a charge which makes them unable to transfer energy directly to the critical target. Here we have a typical example of the indirect action of radiation in this case. The photon ionizes the water molecule in the cell. The photon knocks out an electron from the water molecule, turning this water molecule into an ion radical, which is the H2O plus you see on your screen. This ion radical, which is highly reactive, then proceeds to react with another water molecule to form hydronium and hydroxyl radicals. Now, the hydroxyl radical is very interesting because it is larger in diameter than the DNA and is able to cause over 60% of X-ray damage to the DNA. We hope you enjoyed this brief explanation on the effects of radiation. See you next time.